Hello, this is Firefur Tiger Coast of the Public Safety Future Responders Podcast with my co host Medic Doug. Unfortunately, Medic Doug cannot be here with me on this recording for our seventh episode of our season two. But hey, folks, you got me. So we're going to dive right into it. Um, on our seventh episode of our podcast, we are going to be talking about the emergency medical services, the, going over what is an EMR, EMT, paramedic. Um, which are the three care, medical care providers outside of the hospital. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, folks, EMRs, what are they? Um, EMR stands for Emergency Medical Responders. They are the lowest level um, of care outside of the hospital. Um, EMRs typically each complete a 48 to 60 hour course that trains on how to provide immediate life saving care to ill or injured individuals, performing basic procedures with minimal equipment. Um, emergency medical responders learn to treat immediate white threats until additional EMS resources arrive. EMRs do not typically work on ambulances unless they work in rural areas, like in the suburbs or a town, or with volunteer departments like the volunteer ambulance associations, such as to name a couple that I know of, the East Hampton and the Durham Ambulance Volunteer Association. Um, and then the next level up from EMRs are your EMTs, which are higher than EMRs, um, but are still lower than the paramedics. Um, EMTs are your emergency medical technicians. Um, pretty much EMTs do higher educating work because they perform more, more duties and tasks more than what the EMRs do. Um, so pretty much with EMTs, EMT courses are 150 to 190 hours, according to Pocket Prep, <coughs> and trained to provide pre-hospital emergency care to the sick and injured. They provide a, a little bit higher higher medical care than the EMRs, but not as much as what paramedics do, because paramedics are the highest ones, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, EMTs are taught basic life support skills that include stabilizing and transporting patients. EMTs can perform interventions with basic equipment found on an ambulance, um, in order, according to Pocket Prep, which I wouldn't trust, but anyways, you do not need EMR training before entering an EMT program. Um, and then, of course, the a bit higher EMTs, even though most people really don't see this as a slot in the EMS um, pyramid, is your advanced emergency medical technicians. Um, which only are in most states, um, which is a bit higher than EM EMTs because they're the advanced version of the emergency technicians. Um, AME, which are your advanced emergency medical technicians, or AEMT. Um, AEMT courses are approximately 150 to 250 hours and provide training in basic and limited advanced life support skills and transportation for people who are sick and injured. Um, and then... So pretty much they can do what a normal EMT do, just with a bit of additional advanced training, a little bit more than what EMTs, normal EMTs can do, which are found in most states, as I said. And then we have reached the most advanced of all first responders outside of the hospital, which is your paramedic, the highest level outside of the hospitals. Um, paramedics complete approximately 1,000 hours of courses that train on advanced life support skills, including intravenous therapy, Intribution, intubulation, sorry, and the administration of life saving medications. They are the ones who you call on to provide medical, medical, uh, medicine drugs that are that EMTs and EMRs cannot provide. Um, in addition to dictate portions of the course, paramedics must complete clinical training in a hospital and an internship on an ambulance with a preceptor or training officer who evaluates them. So folks, basically if you want to be an EM if you want to be a paramedic, my best recommendation would be uh, be an EMR first, then go to EMT, then go to the paramedic, uh, because that way you have it more of an understanding. Um, paramedics have the complex skills and knowledge to provide quality medical care in the pre hospital setting and are trained to use all basic and advanced equipment on the ambulance. Besides working on an ambulance, other job opportunities for paramedics include working as a firefighter paramedic or a helicopter flight medic, which you'll see the helicopter flight medics on, like, Lifestar, which 
um, are in those helicopters you see that fly between hosp from scenes to hospitals for the most urgent cases that can't go by ambulances, or in the cities where where your where the fire departments are also providing medical procedures and that. Most cities now are usually fire fire EMTs, but there are a lot of fire departments going to paramedics within the city. Um, the highest in the suburbs for fire departments in terms of medical are you're going to be your EMRs and EMTs in your rural areas. Um, so on an ambulance, you'll usually either see a combination of EMRs or EMTs or EMTs and paramedics. Usually your BLS ambulances, which is your basic life support ambulances, will usually run with either with in EMR and EMT. And then your ALS units, which are your stands for advanced life support, are going to be your EMTs and paramedic combo and that. So just to kind of give you guys a bit of understanding of combinations that work in the ambulance with the ambulances. And then, of course, the paramedics. Paramedics, like it is, can be either with an EMT on an ambulance or they have their own emergency response vehicles, which you'll find the paramedic units usually at hospitals or at the outpatient clinics if there are more than one at paramedics, which in the state of Connecticut, there are a lot of them. So, yeah. Um, hmm. So, pretty much going over, EM if you look at it at a pyramid point of view, EMRs are your lowest level of pre-hospital care followed by your EMTs that are above them. Um, in most states, you have the advanced emergency medical technicians that will take the spot right directly above the EMTs. In most states, but in like Connecticut, for example, we only just have EMRs, EMTs, and paramedics, as far as to my knowledge. Um, and then at the top of the pyramid are your paramedic um, people. So in terms of how orders are given, um, for EMRs, EMRs... If you're not medically certified, you listen to really any any of them, EMRs, EMTs, or paramedics. But in the case of a in case of the pyramid um, example, pretty much if you're not medically trained, you'll take or you will listen to the EMRs um, on how to do care. Um, and then a, and then if an EMT arrives, you listen to an EMT. Because the EMTs override paramedics, I mean, um, not paramedics, uh, emergency medical responders. Um, and then if a paramedic show, and then if a, in most states, if advanced EMT shows up, well, they're still, I think, as far as I'm aware of, which people can comment in below, um, would do, would have the same orders, maybe a bit higher than what a normal EMT is. Um, and then of course, paramedics show up, paramedics oversee all of them. And the paramedics would be the ones that give the orders to the EMTs to take care of. And then, of course, with paramedics being the highest outside of the hospital, from the hospital, you usually will have the doctors that will have advise paramedics on what to do. So, again, according to pocket prep, emergency medical responders typically um, complete a 48 to 60 hour course. Um, EMTs usually about 150 to 190 hours. Um, advanced emergency medical technicians, if you have them, if you are certified, are approximately 150 to 250. And, of course, the paramedics are approximately 1,000 hours of courses that are being trained on, which you can find training courses wherever they are available. So, yep. Uh, let's see. In terms of ambulances... Pretty much like it is, ambulances also operate just like a fire truck or a police car. Um, nine, if a 911 call goes out, um, an, ambulance is, well, an ambulance will respond. You'll find ambulances on routine medical calls, uh, motor vehicle accidents, and that. Um, in terms of paramedic rigs, you will find them at probably the request of dispatch for when a Fire, fire unit is on scene um, needing advanced life support um, request station to dispatch to request a paramedic to the scene unless an ambulance already has one um, which most of the time you usually at most medical calls unless specifically stated to dispatch you'll get the basic life support ambulances that will respond and then 
And then if advanced life support is needed, then they'll say send an ALS unit if one is available. Um, and then paramedics are usually requested unless they are on a, um ambulance. And in terms of flight medics, usually how the med med flight or life star, whatever they are called in your area, um, are usually requested to the scene for when when transport by ambulance is either unavailable or the patient is in critical need to get to a hospital as soon as possible and time is of the matter, hence why of the golden hour, um, which you can look up what the golden hour is because I'm not going to probably go into it because I'm just talking about the different functions of EMS. Um, and of course, according to the EMS.gov, um, emergency medical services, more commonly known as the EMS, is a system that responds to emergencies in need of highly skilled pre-hospital clinicians but EMS clinicians aren't just the first healthcare practitioner on the scene. They're often the first to identify a healthcare crisis in a community and act as a critical component of emergency management and increasingly a practitioner of community healthcare. So in terms of emergency management, just like how you'll see in the emergency operations center, you'll usually see not only the fire chief and the police chief, but you'll also see the EMS coordinator, which unless you're an ambulance association, you will have your own EMS coordinator. Otherwise, if a fire department has an EMS division, you'll find EMS coordinators within the fire department. Um, depending on the size of the fire department, you may have one to two uh, medical coordinators. I know for the fire department I volunteer for, I have one main EMS coordinator with an assistant, so technically I have two EMS coordinators. Um... EMS is most recognized by its vehicles, helicopters, and workforce, which responds to emergency incidents. But far from being simply a ride to the emergency department, this system of coordinated response and emergency medical care involves numerous people and agencies. A comprehensive EMS system is ready every day for every kind of emergency, whether or not that includes going to the hospital. Um, despite a robust ecosystem of its own, EMS does not exist in isolation. It integrates with other services such as fire departments and police departments and systems intended to enhance the community health and safety. As seen in the graphic below, EMS operates at the crossroads of healthcare, public health, emergency management, and public safety, uh, which will be in the video as you are listening to this recording. Uh, the principles and resources of each field are employed in EMS systems. As noticed above, the emergence of a significant health problem is often heralded by its arrival in the ED. Because EMS clinicians respond to all kinds of emergencies, hazards, and natural and man-made disasters, they often work side-by-side -side with public safety colleagues and law enforcement and the fire service with the primary mission of providing emergency medical care. Um, also, too, in a mass casualty incident, you will see EMS um, emergency management um, incident command system being followed in a mass casualty incident um, as deemed by such incident. Um, EMS also plays a role in non-emergent medical care. Community paramedicine, CP, also known as Mobile Integrated Healthcare, MIH, is a patient-centered healthcare model in which EMS clinicians provide care outside the emergency response system, frequently through scheduled visits in the patient's home. These patients are often fr from unserved population without ready access to healthcare or health insurance. Community paramedics work closely with primary care physicians, social services, and other preventive services, resulting in patients making few, fewer emergency calls for help and experiencing better, better health care outcomes. Um, EMS clinicians also play an important role in mental health and behavioral health crisis services. The ideal crisis response model is an integrated service involving EMS, mental health professionals, and sometimes law enforcement to provide caring, high-quality support to individuals experiencing a mental health crisis. The goal of Christ services is to increase access to quality mental and behavioral health care for those in need. Um, hence why the EMS has that star that you see so frequently of, which is known as the Star of Life. Um, which the Star of Life has represents one of six EMS functions. Um, Detection, reporting, response, on-scene care, care in transit, tran and transfer to definitive care, uh, which is which is adapted from the medical identification symbol of the American Medical Association. Uh, the serpent and staff in the symbol in the middle symbolizes the staff 
of I'm not going to pronounce it because I'm going to butcher it, so I'm just going to spell it. The staff of A-S-C-L-E-P-I-U-S, -E an ancient Greek physician defiant as the god of medicine. Overall, the staff represents medicine and healing with the skin shielding serpent indicating renewal. The star of life has become synopsis with emergency medical care around the globe. This symbol is a means of identification on ambulances, emergency medical equipment, patches, or apparel worn by EMS technicians. It is also adorned materials such as books, pamphlet, manuals, reports, and publications that either have a direct EMS application or were generated by an EMS organization. On maps and highway signs, this symbol indicates the location of or access to qualified emergency medical care. Um, learn more about how to use the Star of Life from the NHTSA Star of Life manual. Link to EMS.gov will be in the description for you guys to go check that out. Um, pretty much... Looking at it, folks, you'll see the Star of Life, like I said, on ambulances, on emergency medical equipment, and then um, in firehouses, you'll also see the Star of Life on fire trucks, which will also indicate um, the emergency medical response flag cars, hence three in my, in my fire department, because we do not run ambulances. Um, some towns will have their own ambulances incorporated into the fire service, so yep. Um, so you'll find them on those. You'll find them on the emergency medical flag cars. Um, in terms of, and then you'll also find them, like, in the cities. You'll find them on fire engines where the Star Life is indicating where the medical supplies are on that truck. And same goes for the ladder, too. Um, for mutual aid responses and that. Well, folks, that concludes the port... Episode 7, What is the Emergency Medical Services? I hope you enjoy, and hopefully I got you to, hopefully it helps you all understand a little bit more on what the Emergency Medical Services is, who they are, and what is their job that they do in the emergency um, responders field. Um, folks, I will leave a couple links in the description for you all to go check out. Feel free to hit the like and comment if you're on YouTube. Or feel free to leave us a like over on Spotify if you can. And folks, from, from myself, from my co-host, Medic Dog, and myself, Fur Fur Tiger, we wish you all a good day and good luck. And hopefully you all enjoyed this. Um, at the time of the, at the date of this recording, it is Monday, November 6th. So hopefully you guys will be enjoying this when it is published on Friday, or if not sooner. Um, folks... You all have a good one, and we wish you all a uh, happy November. Take care, all, and we will see you all on another podcast episode. Ciao!